we can use a Stripe secret key to connect an application to Stripe's API. So for example, here I import the Stripe library, here I get the Stripe secret key from environment variables, and then I create an instance of Stripe from it. I can then use this Stripe instance to create checkout sessions, uh, send refunds, all sorts of stuff. However, an issue with using secret keys is that they are extremely sensitive, as they provide full access to the Stripe API. And this means that if this key is exposed, the malicious user could refund charges, cancel subscriptions, just do anything because they have full access. And so if I go to the Stripe dashboard right here, which I'll paste the link in the description, but essentially it's API keys. And if we look here at standard keys, we can see secret key right here that unlocks full API access. And if your application requires full API access, then using the secret key is your only option. But if you do not need full API access, and most applications do not, then what you should really use is restricted keys, which are just right down here. So restricted keys have specific access limits and permissions for greater security. So to do a demonstration, let me just generate right here. So create restricted key. And this will be for our own integration because I'll be using server-side code to implement my own. So I'll just to continue. We can give the key a name, so test, test key. And then if we look down here, we have all the permissions that we want to add to this key. So we can see customers, charges, disputes, basically enabling everything would be the equivalent to having a secret key. But a common usage of Stripe is just to create a one-time payments from a pre-built payment form. So say they click on a button saying, buy this product, it'll just take them to the classic Stripe checkout form where they enter their payment info. And the only one of all these permissions we would need to do that is just checkout sessions. And so for checkout sessions, I would just have to click right, then we would say create key, and now we have our test key right here, where the only thing, if it was ever exposed, people could do is just create checkout sessions. And that's not really bad, because if they created a checkout session, all they could do then is just buy something or, you know, something like that. But of course, you still don't want to expose it, so you still want to keep it safe. But after using, after generating this restricted key with checkout set to write, and also if you add the write permission, that adds the read permission as well, if you're curious. But this essentially means now we have access to the stripe.checkout object. So back in the code, when you create an object like this, like Stripe, afterwards you'd be able to use this.stripe.checkout because you now have write permission for it. But if you tried to access a property like stripe.customers, for example, then you would get an error message that like the following. Let me just paste it in because I've uh, done this before. So you would get an error message like this where it says error getting information from the extension the provided key, and here's the key here, does not have the required permissions. So, and then it tells you the permission it would need. And so if you're worried about maybe disabling certain permissions, if you just use this in development, you will see all those permissions. Um, you'll, you should have tested for those before you put it on production anyway. So for me personally, usually I only need the checkout one, at least until I implement subscriptions or something like that. But if you like content like this, check out my courses linked in the description. Also check out my software. I have some pretty cool Chrome extensions that will really help you out if you're a developer. But besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.